I'm the one who was dead, but now I'm alive. Y'all know who I am. since the pandemic started. But they've never been and still are not paid enough to afford essentials. That's the big contradiction that we're facing. So we need an organization. We need the strength of unity. And so we built an organization, like I mentioned, that's open seven days a week with an office just down the street at 53 East Washington. Um, and what we do is everything is premised on examples of those policy campaigns, but I'll just uh, give a couple for the sake of time. In recent years, our members have accomplished a string of victories. In 2017, our members were instrumental in a campaign to prevent the sale of Atlantic City's municipal water system to New Jersey American Water. Uh, the state had taken over Atlantic City, and they wanted to raise the rates. Um, if uh, they wanted to sell it off and privatize it, if they had, the, rate, the rates would have gone up on average 80% based on what's happened elsewhere in the state. We were part of a campaign that prevented the water from getting bought up. Anybody heard about what happened in Flint with the water? So this was like the first step towards that, is they take it over and then they start to squeeze as much profit out of it as possible, and we wanted to stop that before it even got started. Then the following year, in 2018, our members played a deciding role in forcing the, the state board I just mentioned, the Board of Public Utilities, to cut $89 million from a water rate hike here in our community. And stop a precedent of enacting rate hikes without the government even approving it. Because water companies were trying to go ahead and stick us with the high bills, and then later go to the state and get approval. We didn't want that to happen. In 2019, a delegation of our members right over here at City Hall prevented the privatization of the Pleasantville sewer system. And in 2020, uh, members and allies wanted uh, temporary housing worth $1,000 per tenant for a number of illegally evicted motel residents right here along the Black Horse Pike. So this brings us to why we're compelled to respond to government policies, to the role of institutions of the government, particularly at the state level on up. Because historically, they've often aided and abetted the profiteering, the making of money out of our communities. Martin Luther King had a great quote. He said, true compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. I mentioned the Board of Public Utilities. Those are five officials appointed by the governor they approve these rate increases that our members are struggling and scrimping and saving in, effort, in an effort to pay. They guarantee as a policy that the electric company will have an annual profit of more than 10%. With those substantial earnings, the parent company of the electric utility paid nearly $500 million last year in dividends to its shareholders. This is not money that goes back into anybody's retirement account. It doesn't come into our communities at all. It just stays up at the top among billionaires. So this is not a secret. These are all public financial records. These profits are enabled by what the electric company's parent company calls constructive regulatory relationships. That's how they term it in their documentation. That means that they get the politicians to work for them at their benefit, but at our expense. And the result is the kind of thing that we face, where our members are having their lives put at risk. Uh, Miss Linda Daniels died in Newark in 2018 in the summer because she had congestive heart failure and the electric company cut her off anyway. Our lives are being put at risk and in danger in order to ensure that those profits go to the top, and the state is doing that at our expense. So that's why we have the organizational type that we do. That's why we're all volunteer. That's why we don't take any government funding. That's why we urgently, urgently need volunteer participation in whatever way that you can participate. So this afternoon, we're going to have a table set up right over there. Vanessa and Janaya and I will be there. We encourage everyone to stop by to learn about the ways that you can, you can be a part of our efforts. Our office 
is currently, uh, as I mentioned, running seven days a, seven days a week in the midst of uh, an upcoming holiday campaign that's going to be going on throughout the next three months, and in the midst of a weekly canvas campaign, volunteers are getting training in every aspect of the work that we do, uh, from how to do advocacy to prevent these shutouts from happening, to how to run legal and medical sessions. Um, other volunteers are part of a office renovation as we get ready to open a service center that will triple the amount of space with volunteers in the trades. I already talked to Mr. David Wilson about some of the construction ways to help out and talked to another gentleman who's asking for training. And I didn't emphasize enough that we do have opportunities for volunteers at NOAA scale, like plumbing or electrical, to work with uh, basically apprentices and teach them some of the skills to pass those on on the job training. So please stop by the table, and Vanessa and Janaya and myself will tell you about those opportunities. You can also help with the donation. We have a beautiful 2023 calendar that's put together all by volunteer artists. And uh, we can also tell you about the ways that the church is already supporting, like through a monthly fresh food distribution, frozen food distribution. Um, and you could join with Vivian in doing some of those uh, group church-based activities. Thank you so much. Um, and as he says, please um, feel free. Um, the information is there. You can volunteer or for those who need any type of assistance. At uh, this moment, we're going to have our elder, Mr. Anthony McFarland. And he's coming to us from the Atlantic Community um, Division of Community Health. I want to see the whole day, man. Oh, it's still morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, those of us who were here earlier on, we wanted did to be made there already. Yes. <laughs> now, if you look across there, you'll see a table, and I have some documents set up there for you. My name is Anthony McFarlane, as you heard. I work with the Atlantic County Public Health Department. I'm the Social Service Support Coordinator. What does that say? If you test positive for an illness and you cannot work, when you call the extension, the number which is 609-645-7700, extension 6213, you will get me and I will connect you with services like the gentleman who went before me because they are available in the community where you can get assistance with. And if you have internet access, I'll give you the government website which is where you can get some of the things that you need, which is nj.gov slash get covered ng. If you need insurance, as I always do at church, you all know me already, please do not be without insurance because we live in a world today, everywhere you go to, they ask you if you have a little card, which is your insurance card. And if you don't have that, you're less likely to get services. Now, when I looked around us, I can see we are basically a group of minorities. And minorities, we are categorized as less fortunate because we don't get medical access as quickly as we should. Our other relatives get it faster than us. So I always encourage you to go to ng.gov, and when you get there, you will see the big tab that will tell you need health insurance, see if you qualify for a special enrollment period. You scroll down, you click on learn more. This will this open up a page for you which will say, when can I buy health insurance? You don't need to buy it, you go to NJ Family Care. We'll click on that link, the Family Care tab will open. You scroll down, you'll see how much money each person can afford if they need insurance with their finances. If not, you'll see the poverty line that is spoken of. Now, I like the gentleman who he said, if you're making a certain amount, but if you're making two cents more, you don't get coverage, which is very funny. Two cents. It's not much. If you're making two cents, just 
getting out of poverty, they tell you you can't get coverage. So you have to make sure you know how much you're making. And don't think it is they want they know your business. They already know your business. They want to know if you're being honest. That's all they want to know. If you are being honest with your business. So you got to be honest and tell them how much is the gross income. Now when you do that, you're going to help yourself and you're going to help me because you less likely have to call my extension. Because if I get too many calls, then I can answer all of them because I only have two ears and the phone only have one receiver. So that's why I'm encouraging you to go on that website and try and learn as much as you can from what you can get from the system. Now the system is not set up as it should. It is not a perfect system. There are flaws in the system. Now if you cannot do that and you want something else that will help you, I have a few of these books with me. It's called The Source. In there, you will find all the information you need. It tells you it's a resource guide for people of all ages in Atlantic County, New Jersey. You have information for Aging and Disability Resource Connection, ADRC. You have information for this, those who are disabled and age. Well, if you have some disability, don't be afraid. I remember meeting, a, I met a friend, a young man, we became friends, and he was telling me how he went to Stockton and didn't have to pay tuition at all. And I asked him, how come? It's like because he was diagnosed with diabetes from, a, from childhood, and he's insulin dependent. And because of that, it is considered a disability. So in order for him to go to college, he applied for disability, and he got all his tuition paid. I know many of you didn't know that. I didn't know it either. So those of you, if you have such illness, whether you're an adult or a young child, you can get tuition to pay to go college. So you don't have to suffer. Yes, I know you will tell me, because some of us, we have degrees, and we still can't get the job. But it is more likely that if you look like me and you look like you and I, we look like that, and we have a little piece of paper to show, that gives us a little edge to get what we need. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether it is in technical or any other area that you can get your little piece of paper and try to get it. Because in this book, you'll find a lot of information there. And I have a few, so those of you who need it, and Elder Wilson, bring me one of those little pieces of paper that you just picked up. Thank you very much. Kindly bring it to me. Now all of us have smartphones. There's a QR code on this scan. If you scan it, you don't need that little book. If you scan the QR code on this card that I'm showing you here, which I'll have at the table, with your smartphone, you don't need to have that little copy of that book in your hand. Every information on this will be found in your smartphone, so you can just scroll and find it. So before you leave, make sure you scan this QR code so you can get the source on your device. Another thing that I need to address with you is this. In our office, we have clinics every Monday for those who are adult and whether you are male or female and you are engaging in sexual activity and you need to be tested for STD or STI. STD, sexually transmitted disease, STI, sexually transmitted illness. If you know you're active and you're not using the little balloon called the condom, every Monday between the hours of 2 to 4 p.m., Come to 201 South Shore Road, you don't have to make an appointment, you walk in, you'll be able to get your test done, the result will come back, they'll give you a code, that code belongs to you, don't share it with your spouse or with your partner, because it's your code. When your result comes back and they call you, they'll ask you for that code. If you cannot give them that code, you can't get the result, because that code is attached to your name and your name only. On Tuesdays, there is what we have, we call child health clinics. All children, pediatrician, 
all the way up to 17, because once you reach 18, the above they can go to somewhere else. And you, you will get clinics where you can get immunization, vaccination, all the gamut that you need for the child. With this one, this year they put in a, a price on us. It normally used to be free, but some of those that you can get at your doctor, you will have to pay for it. So if you can get it from your pediatrician, get it from him or her. Because if not, only the COVID vaccine is free. The flu shot, they're charging now. Why the government saying that it is expensive and some people, they don't get reimbursed from Medicaid, certain part, there is part A and part B, Sister Yvonne and the others, you all know what kind of thing they be, I don't remember all the name of it. So help those who are near you. So if you have a certain part of the Medicaid card, you may not get coverage. But you can get free COVID vaccines. And the free COVID vaccine is walk in. You walk in on a Wednesday afternoon, you get your shot in your arm, and you go your way. It's not far from here. As I said, it's on 201 South Shore Road, because when you leave Pleasant Village, change to Shore Road. It's the same Main Street. You just stay on Main Street all the way up. The building will be to your right, still water building. The clinic is downstairs in the basement. Our offices are upstairs, second floor and third floor. So you just need to go downstairs, do your thing, go your way. No problem. They don't ask you any questions, well, how many children you have, no, no, no. You just come and get your shot and go your way. And don't worry. I know some of my friends in the neighborhood, you probably say, well, you are undocumented, you are covered. You need a vaccine, you're covered. You live in the community. They don't ask you for your passport. They don't ask you what's your citizen status. So don't be afraid to come and get it. It is available to you. Right now, they are, the CDC is asking us to make sure we get our fifth shot. Because some of us had four. They are saying there is a fifth one that is specifically designed for the Omicron variant. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'll just be quite honest with you. There is no need for us to be afraid of this thing. I don't like needles. But yet I had to get it. Because pre prevention is better than... Say it loud, you all know. Prevention is... So if you can prevent something, let's prevent it. Because we are vulnerable. We live in a society where there are people who don't care, and they will do anything and try to influence you to do otherwise. But I will encourage you, take care of your health. It is important. Because the Bible tells us, God wants us to be prosperous and in I'm not hearing you. God wants us to be prosperous and in So if we are in good health, then we're able to volunteer and assist Eastern services. But if we're not in good health, we can't assist them. Then we cannot work. We can't have a salary. Our mortgages will be due. We will lose our houses. I don't want that to happen to you. So I want you to prevent the illnesses. Now, there are some of us, we, we think that it is okay. The CDC said, let's relax the protocols. Yes, but hear what they're telling you. Only be with people that are from your household c closely connected as possible. And if someone is not from your household, give them some distance. You know, the old days they used to say, feed someone with a long spoon. I can say hello to you at a distance, that's okay. It's just health. So I want you to make sure you take care of yourself and be in good health. What else I have to share with you? We also have substance use disorder treatment available to you up there. If you need that, I have the booklet and the leaflet over there at the table so you can stop by, I'll be able to give it to you. There are lots of information I can share with you, but I don't want to take too much time and I don't want to prevent you from getting the message, the spiritual message, because all what we're giving you is important, but there's a spiritual aspect to it. And I think I saw the pastor when I was speaking up here that he's coming after me, so I need to make space for him. He, he has something important to share with you from the Word of God, so I don't want to take all that time. Uh, if you need assistance again, I remember what I told you, the number is 609-645-7700. Once you call that number, it will ask you, the machine will ask you which office you need. Then you will direct your extension to where you want to go. 
please, people, make use of those systems because it is there to help all of us. Those of us who need assistance, don't be afraid to come and ask what is it you need and we will be able to assist you. The table is set right across there. To my left, we will be to your right. Come there before you leave to go home. Get the services that you need, the leaflets that you need. Sign up for what you need to sign up. And may the good Lord continue to bless you. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your time with us. And may the Lord make you prosperous and successful. Be good. good. Thank you so much, Anthony. Um, at this time, I'm going to call Brother and Sister Harrison. We're going to have a moment to just recognize those who have um, contributed to uh, our community service, wherever your community is or wherever you live, that uh, you have made your contribution. And so before we do that, we just want to recognize them because they were once here with us as members, but I know they have now requested transfer, but they're still our family members. So uh, before they come, I just want to um, present them with a certification of recognition for their contribution to our community service whilst they were here. So thank you so much. Let's give them a bigger hand than that, please. And a more extended one, thank you. Good morning, church. It's uh, so good to be home. Amen. Um, no matter where we are, um, Seashore is still our home. Um, this is where we started. And um, wherever we go, we carry Seashore with us. So we never forget there's um, the part that says, oh, we know never forget where you're from. So we never forget where we're from. So it's a pleasure for me to be here this morning. And my name is Brother Heisen. And uh, this is my beloved and beautiful wife, uh, Marie. So we are blessed to have our two um, great sons with us as well, uh, Noah and um, Nathan. Um, who are here with us. So again, we are glad to be with you today. So, um, we want to take this moment to um, honor some of the members um, that have been good to Seashore and uh, our community as a whole. So when uh, we call your name, um, we'd like you to come up. And um, I'm going to ask a favor of the department head, um, Sister Vivian Thompson, to come up. And um, if that's OK, the elders, and as well as the pastors, if they could come up as well. I know your pastor wasn't expecting this. But um, I believe we should honor you while you're alive. Amen? Uh, so as we call your name, uh, we ask you to please come up and we'll recognize you. And uh, they will sh shake your hands and recognize you, hug you as they uh, feel pleased. And uh, for those that haven't seen this award or certificate, 
it reads certificate of recognition. We hereby present Marvin Harvey with the certificate acknowledging your achievement and contribution to the community service awarded on this 17th day of September 2022. Marvin. Thank you so much. And just to acknowledge um, Belinda Best, she is the president of the Bay um, Area Community Service Department. So um, on behalf of Marvin, she will be collecting and many other awards too for those who aren't here. Andre Fletcher. Andre Fletcher. Um, Audrey Fletcher. I'm sorry. Audrey Fletcher. Again. Sister Belinda Bess. And that's her. <laughs> Eastern Service Workers Association. Thank you. 
part of each month, contributing to the year to our community service by LinkedIn to the We just want to recognize him and know who he is. Thank you. This is our last uh, certificate. It goes to Atlantic Community Public Health. I'm sorry, Atlantic County Public Health. Thank you. Elder McFarland, on behalf of your department, we do have a Certification of recognition. Thank you. <laughs> Come on up so we can have you on camera, please. Thank you to Brother and Sister Harrison for taking a moment again for being with us and um, doing this uh, presentation on our behalf of two or honorees. At this moment, I invited my pastor to stay, but before he does come and give us a little talk on community service and um, both local and international, so we are able to understand what we are and what we should represent as a church. We're going to have um, Elder Sylvester with a few songs. Thank you. 